Now you've mentioned it's really important to actually do the work. That's something that we hear so many times. And you've expressed that you need to actually take that kick at the can. Aside from that, is there any other advice that you would have for new or aspiring writers? Yeah. Um, write a story till you think you're finished. Okay. Um, resist the temptation to tweak it forever. Come to a, um, bring yourself to a thing where you say, yes, this story is ready to go out into the world. Then pick, hopefully by then you will have gathered friends whose reading judgment you respect. Even if, you, even if it's your mom or dad, but somebody and give it to them to read and see what they think. Accept the criticism. If don't dismiss it. If your mom says, I got really confused in the middle of who was trying to do what to whom. And you say, well, of course, mom, you don't read fantasy or you don't read science fiction. Well, of course you're, you'd get confused. No, no, pay attention because if your mom lost the thread in the middle, are there a few sentences you could put in there that would guide the reader a bit more or give the reader a moment to take stock or remind the reader of what's really important? Like, for instance, if somebody's gone missing and your main character is running around a giant house looking for them and they're discovering all these dead bodies, in the middle of it, you could say, but I have to find Miriam. Or, you know, you remind the reader, this is what my quest was in the middle of all this. Oh, my God, another body. And it's still not Miriam. You know, so you remind the reader what's going on, which gives them a sort of clutch to crutch to cling to in the middle of all this. So take the criticisms to heart. You don't have to accept every one of them and you don't have to rewrite your masterpiece to match every criticism because some people will have crazy criticisms and some people will have so what criticisms. But, you know, I don't like murder mysteries and you wrote a murder mystery, so I didn't like it. Well, that's so what? Okay, but pay attention because if somebody got lost in the narrative or somebody felt it was too rushed or too slow, maybe you can fix that. When you Later on, you will find people you can trust as editors and you can hire them. And they tend to be, good ones tend to be expensive like everything else in life, you get what you pay for. So you will find editors you want to work with. If you, if you want to find an example of that, Look online for a blog called Grammargeddon with an exclamation mark. It's written by two editors, one of them very active, one of them who almost never posts. And they will cover the grammar of editing. And, and you could just read those for free. But I mean, and you may want to hire that particular woman who is active um, to edit your stuff, but you'll have to pay by the hour. And you may not have the budget for that. So that may be something you do when you become a big established writer. But anyway, have somebody else take a look at the, the story. And they may point out something that you just completely forgot because you're too close to the narrative. Uh, Sue Grafton, who wrote a long series of um, Milhone mysteries, A is for Alibi, B is for, you know, she has a book in which uh, Kinsey Milhone, the, the main character, is fleeing from a murderer in an office building late at night. And she takes off her shoes and stuffs them in her coat pockets so that she'll be in her nylons so he won't hear her walking around as she runs away from him through the building. And eight pages later, she's, she's out in traffic and running through the city. She's never put her shoes back on. That got past the editors, that got past the writer, that made it into print until s many readers said, so why isn't she leaving bloody footprints by now? She's been running through the city for, you know, eight blocks, nine blocks now without her shoes on. <clears throat> and the writer went, oh, my gosh. You know, so that's why you have an editor look at things. And then. The next bit of research is who would publish this? Don't send your murder mystery 
to a travel log publisher. If all they publish is travel books and your murder mystery takes place at home, then they're not going to publish your murder mystery. That's not what they do. Look for who would publish a book like yours. If you want to write like Stephen King, look at who Stephen King's publisher is. If you want to write like Tom Clancy or Daniel Steele or Nora Roberts, look who's publishing them. Every single publisher who has a successful writer, like the one of those I've just mentioned, those writers are expensive and they can never write fast enough. Well, okay, Stephen King and Nora Roberts can do four books a year, but they start churning. Like James Patterson and Tom Clancy, they get co-writers and all the books start to feel and sound the same. So they will always want more. So if you can write something sort of in the same stables, but not quite the same, then if that's what your book is, that's where you send it. Read their submission guidelines. If they want you to have an agent, find an agent. If they don't care if you have an agent, just make sure you've you formatted it. In the same way that a teacher might say to you, I'm not going to read any essay that's written in crayon. I'm not going to read any essay that you haven't put your name on. I'm just going to throw them away. I'm not going to mark them. Same way the editor and a publisher may say, we want them type double space S-A-S-E. And if you don't do that, they're just going to throw them away. And by the way, that's what their legal department says they have to do. If you write something set in somebody else's intellectual property, if you write a Star Trek novel, a Forgotten Realms novel, a Star Wars novel, a Lord of the Rings novel, and send it to them, they're going to throw it in the garbage without looking at it. And they're not going to respond to you because their lawyers have told them, yeah, we can't get involved in this. So do the basics of learning how and where you should put something into print. So you're aiming it at the best chance to get published and do it. If you don't know what the best chance is, self-publish through Amazon and then send copies of the published book to us, to publishers. See if they can, you can get them interested. But the main thing is finish your book first. Because if you're a first time author, walking into a publisher's or seeing them at a convention saying, hi, I've got this idea for a great 18 book series on the rise and fall of Canada. It's going to be set in the future where Canada is going to have an empire where we conquer the entire globe and it's going to have passion. It's going to have romance. It's going to have huge fights. The publisher is going to say, uh, what have you published so far? And you say, well, nothing yet. Well, they're just going to laugh because they have to see the finished book. A, to know that you can finish a book. So finish the book first. If you're a first-time writer, you have to be selling a finished story, whether it's a short story, novella, or novel, or a trilogy. you got to finish it first. Later on, you can get to the luxury of, Hey, I got this great idea. Do you want to publish it? Sure. But that's for the Stephen Kings of this world. For the rest of us, write the book first, get it finished. For one thing, there's the self-satisfaction of finishing the book yourself. Even if you never get it published, you saw it through to the end. You told your story. Now, as we draw things to a close, there may be some people who aren't as familiar with your work or are just learning about you for the first time right now. If they want to know more about you or your writing, what should they look for? The Forgotten Realms? Your work on dmsguild.com? Should they look into the Storm Talons universe? Or something completely different? Hmm. There's very little Storm Talons stuff out there. Um, I've done one steampunk novel. It's called The Iron Assassin. I've done... A series of novels now increasingly hard to find. The Kingless Land and its sequel, the Aglerta books with Tor, which are not realms. I've done about um, 40 realms books, one way or the other. Um, if you just want to see my writing, see me having fun, and you're on Twitter, just look me up at, at the Edverse, all run together, of course, into one word. T-H-E-E-D-V-E-R-S-E, -E -E -E, at the Edverse. And every day I answer Realms Lore questions, but I also publish Doggerel, 
short rhyming poetry that is just for fun and is usually a parody of a famous poem or rock song lyric or folk song lyric. And I just write one for fun, but I turn it into something fantasy usually. And I also, I'm writing ongoing fiction about Lord Wolf, which is usually only a few tweets long each day. And it's a fantasy courtier who is incredibly rude to his king and the kingdom has been invaded and the king he and two other courtiers are on the run together and they are having adventures and it's mainly a an excuse for him to say rude cutting things it's sort of like watching a performance of oscar Wilde's the importance of being earnest or something of the sort where people are spending all their time being cuttingly rude to each other so I and that's just writing for fun. So that's a, that's a good way to say, oh, who is this guy and what does he do? This is what he does for fun. And I just want to thank Ed Greenwood for being here with us today. Again, you can find him on Twitter at the Edverse. That is at t h e e d v e r s e at the Edverse. He's writing there every day. There's an entire story being formed that you can go back and read through. If you have questions, he'll respond to you there. And of course, he's doing a lot of work on dmsguild.com. So if you are interested in learning more about him, please look him up there. And again, Ed, thanks so much for stopping by today. It was a pleasure, a privilege, and a delight. I am Michael Bartrop at whatbinder.com. Please feel free to like and subscribe to these videos to see more upcoming interviews and other content on this site.